Hello guys, welcome back, welcome back. I'm getting these videos out, feeling much better, okay? <laughs> the Laws of Enchantress, please like and subscribe, please like and subscribe. I am promoting my new program, um, which is going to be out May 1st. And on May 1st, it's going to be $2.25. You can pre-sell now for only $1.99. Um, you can look at the other video to see what's going to be in the course. This is going to be like no other course ever. And I wanted to review this book for the Laws of Enchantress. I think if you're going to take the uh, seminar, um, it's a three-day course full of everything, all the ranges. It's going to be so much fun and it's going to heal and help black women. So what I want to show you is this book. I'm sure you guys heard of it. If you haven't, I just want to do a quick book review. This is a free PDF. So you can click on the link. It's an entire free scan of this book just for you. All right. So it's called The Art of Seduction. And it talks about the great seductors of all, basically classic enchanters. And it takes you through the different types and also, you know, what their opportunities are and challenges. So I really like this book. It's about 500 pages. I own this book. This is a great book. Um, and you don't have to buy it because you can actually print this out now. This is the entire book, absolutely free, all pages, front cover to back. So this is my treat to you guys. And I think it's really an important book to cover if you're going to be in the Law of Enchantress. So I'm going to do a quick review of this book. And this is what the Law of Enchantress is about, taking the best of the best of the best. We're going to be talking about manifestation. We're going to be talking about meditation, how to heal your womb. We're going to be talking about crystal healing. We're going to be talking about chakras, how to align your chakras. We're going to review Dr. Emoto's water, his water test and his rice test. We're going to talk about how to get what you want, how to use your feminine sacred power, how to heal and continuously heal, and how to use this program for the rest of your life. And I'm so proud because... This is the only program that focuses on black women, for black women, to get black women what they want. There's so much law of attraction programs. There's so much female empowerment programs, but nothing outright goes and says, this is for the black woman and talks about the unique challenges that we have as black women. And I say it over and over. The biggest thing is our femininity. And that's something sacred for us to heal our feminine core. It is imperative for us if we want to lose weight. It's imperative for us if we want to be successful, we want to be happy, if we want to attract and align and vibrate and pull the things into our life that we deserve. It is imperative. So I just want to go through this book, guys. And again, it's dropping May 1st, my three-day course, May 1st. And on May 1st, it's going to be 225. Prior to May 1st, you can pre-sale. The information will be in the description box and it'll be $1.99 for the three-day course. It's going to have videos, modules, a PDF book. It's going to be really fantastic and you're going to love it. I'm really excited about it. So this book we're reviewing, and I think it's a great book to have prior to Law of Attraction and prior to the Laws of Enchantress, talks about the art of seduction. So, you know, it talks about getting what you want by manipulation. I, I don't like to say manipulation, but it's just knowing. It's, it's, it's knowing what to do. So we're just going to read the synopsis here. So seduction is most subtle, elusive, and effective form of power. It's evident in John F. Kennedy's hold over the masses, as it is in Cleopatra's hold over Anthony. Now, this is a person who wrote The 48 Laws of Power, and it's talking about classic literature seduction from Freud to Ovid to Casanova, you know, to the great people in histories, the art of seduction. So it's really a great book. So again, guys, you can download this. This is absolutely free. It's a PDF link and you don't need to buy the book. You could just download this book or you can read it in the computer, whichever one you want. So what I wanted to cover was the several different types of seductors and how you can, you know, look to see which one you feel attracted to. So this is the seductive characters. They talk about someone called the siren and it says a man is secretly oppressed by the role he has to play, by always having to be responsible, in control, and rational. The siren is the ultimate male fantasy figure because she offers a total release from the limitations of his life. In her presence, which is always heightened and sexually charged, the male feels transported to a realm of pure pleasure. In a world where women are often too timid to project such an image, 
learn to take control of the male libido by embodying his fantasy. So that's the siren. Then we have the rake. And the rake is more of a male version of a seductress. So a woman never quite feels desired and appreciated enough. She wants attention, but a man is often too distracted and unresponsive. The rake is a great female fantasy figure. When he desires a woman brief, that, though that woman may be, he goes to the ends of the earth for her. He may be disloyal, dishonest, and immoral, but that only adds to his appeal. So this tells you what the guys can do, how the guys can seduce too. All right, so the next one is the ideal lover. Most people have dreams in their youth that get shattered or worn down with age. They find themselves disappointed by people, events, reality, which cannot match their youthful ideals. The ideal lover thrives on people's broken dreams, which becomes lifelong fantasies. You long for romance, adventure, lofty spiritual communion. The ideal lover reflects your fantasy. He or she is an artist in creating the illusion you require. In a world of disenchantment and baseness, there is limitless seduction power in following the path of the ideal lover. So just pause right here. As I'm reading these, you can try to see, if possible, which ones resonate with you. If it's too soon for that, just listen. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. But um, you can see which one resonates with you, which one calls to you. And if nothing calls to you, that's perfectly fine. This is what the law of enchantress is. This is why I'm making the program so you can learn. These are all different types of enchantresses. All right. The next is called the dandy. Most of us feel trapped within the limited roles that the world expects us to play. We are in instantly attracted to those who are more fluid than we are those who create their own persona. Dandies excite us because they cannot be categorized and hint at a freedom we want for ourselves. They play with masculinity and femininity. They fashion their own physical image, which is always startling. Use the power of the dandy to create an ambiguous, alluring presence that stirs and repodests desires. The natural. The natural is childhood. The golden paradise we are always consciously or unconsciously trying to recreate. The natural embodies the long for qualities of childhood, spontaneity, sincerity, unpretentiousness, unpretentiousness. In the presence of the naturals, we feel at ease, caught up in their playful spirit, transported back to that golden age. Adopt the poise of the natural to neutralize people's defensiveness and infect them with helpless delight. So as I'm reading these, again, Think about it. Which one of these call to you? And if it don't, just listen. The coquette. The ability to, delay the ability to delay satisfaction is the ultimate art of seduction. While waiting, the victim is held in thrall. Coquettes are the grand masters of the game, orchestrating a back and forth movement between hope and frustration. They bait with the promise of reward, the hope of physical pleasure, happiness, fame by association, power, all of which, however, proves elusive, yet this only makes their targets pursue them more. Imitate the alternating heat and coolness of the coquette, and you will keep the seduced at your heels. The next one is the charmer. Charm is seduction without sex. <laughs> Charmers are consummate manipulators, masking their cleverness by creating a mood of pleasure and comfort. Their method is simple. They deflect attention from themselves and focus it on their target. They understand your spirit, feel your pain, adapt to your moods. In the presence of the charmer, you feel better about yourself. Learn to cast the charmer's spell by aiming at people's primary weakness, vanity, and self-esteem. All right, so this next one here. All right, you have the charismatic. The charismatic is charisma, the presence that excites us. It comes from inner, inner quality, self-confidence, sexual energy, sense of purpose, contentment that most people lack and want. This quality radiates outward, permeating the gestures of charismatic, making them seem extraordinary and superior. They learn to heighten their charisma with a piercing gaze, fiery and an airy mystery. Create the charismatic illusion by radiating intensity while remaining detached. The star. Daily life is harsh, and most of us constantly seek escape from its fantasies and dreams. The star feeds on this weakness, standing out from others, though a distinctive and appealing style, they make us want to watch them. 
At the same time, they are vague and ethereal, keeping their distance and letting us imagine more than is there. Their dreamlike quality works on our unconsciousness. Learn to become an object of fascination by projecting the glitter but elusive presence of the star. So, so far so good, guys. These are all different enchantresses. Okay, so it, it's here. And it tells you how to choose the right victim, create a false sense of security, send mixed signals, create a need, master the art of insinuation into the spirit, create temptation, keep them in suspense. You know, <laughs> it's, it's really a great book to reveal and use. Just don't have it hanging around your house. Don't let people see that. Okay? <laughs> Make sure people aren't aren't looking at that. You get yourself in trouble. So I do want to go over one more part here. And for right here, thousands of years ago, power was mostly gained through physical violence and maintained with what? Brute strength. There was little need for a subtlety. A king or emperor had to be merciless. Only a select few had power, but no one suffered under the scheme of things more than women. They had no way to compete, no weapon at the disposal that could make a man do what they want, politically, socially, or even in the home. Of course, men had one weakness, their insatiable desire for sex. A woman could always toy with his desire, but once she gave into sex, the man was back in control. And if she withheld sex, he could simply look elsewhere or exert force. What good was a power that was so temporary and frail? Yet women had no choice but to submit to this condition. There were some, though, whose hunger with power was so great, and whoever throughout the years, through much cleverness and creativity, attended a wave turning the dynamic around, creating a more lasting, effective form of power. These women among them, Bathsheba from the Old Testament, Helen of Troy, the Chinese siren, he, she, and the greatest of them all, Cleopatra, invented seduction. First, they would draw a man in with all alluring appearance, designing their makeup and adornment to fashion the images of goddesses come to life. By showing only a glimpse of flesh, they would tease a man's imagination, stimulating the desire not just for sex, but for something greater, the chance to possess a fantasy figure. Once they had their victim's interest, the woman would lure them away from the masculine world of war and politics and get them to spend time in the feminine world, a world of luxury, spectacle, and pleasure. They may also lead them astray, literally taking them on a journey, as Cleopatra lured Julius Caesar on a trip down the Nile. Men would grow hooked on these refined central pleasures. They would fall in love. But then, invariably, the woman would just turn cold and indifferent confusing their victims. Just when the man wanted more, they found their pleasures withdrawn. They would be forced into pursuit, trying to win back the favors they once had and tasted, growing weak and emotional in the process. Men who had physical force and all the social power, men like King David, the Trojan Paris, Julius Caesar, Mark Anthony, Kung Fu Cha, would find themselves becoming the slave of a woman. In the face of violence and brutality, these women made seduction a sophisticated art the ultimate form of power and persuasion. They learned to work on the mind first, stimulating fantasies, keeping a man wanting more, creating patterns of hope and despair, the essence of seduction. Their power was not physical, but psychological, not forceful, but indirect and cunning. These first great seductresses were like military generals, planning the destruction of an enemy, and indeed, early accounts of seduction often compare it to battle. The feminine version of warfare. For Cleopatra, it means consolidating an empire. In seduction, the woman was no longer a passive subject object. She had become an active agent, a figure of power. Isn't that great? <laughs> That's some great stuff we're reading there. So, this is a great thing to read. I, I really hope you guys take the opportunity to read this and um, figure out your seduction pattern. Figure out which one you think will be you. You don't have to, but I think it's pretty cool. And I love the parts where they talk about, you know, they, they actually go through all of them and they talk about the opportunities and the challenges and the setbacks of each one. So you could be proactive when you're planning. You know, they say, here's a siren. 
and it talks about the siren and the first siren they speak to is uh cleopatra and then it talks about you know what are the challenges and stuff like that so definitely thank you for listening <laughs> i hope you found this interesting and this is just a snippet and i really think that if you truly want to become an enchanter learning the art of seduction and learning which pattern of seduction you like which one suits your personality whether it's a childful dandy whether it's the hot smoking siren whether it's the ideal lover, you pick the one that speaks to you. And again, don't forget, guys, the Law of Enchantress drops May 1st. Look at the description box if you're interested for doing the pre-sale. It'll be $1.99 and after May 1st and on May 1st, $2.25. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye.